welcome to the Understanding Projects podcast. My discussion today is with Charles Igwe. Charles has extensive credentials, including a PhD in Building and Facilities Management, an Executive MBA in Operations Management, and various certifications, such as the Project Management Professional and Certified Scrum Master designations. Our discussion focuses on Charles' role as PMI Mentor. During our discussion, we talked about the development of smart career goals, the importance of new project managers developing their own sources of power, and some tips for those wanting to achieve their PMP certification. Here is my discussion with Charles Igwe. But yeah, our topic is is around. I noticed on your, I noticed that your on your uh, on your uh, profile is that you are a PMI mentor, and and I thought I found that to be really interesting. So, um, you know, what what when you're a PM, PMI mentor, I assume that is to new or aspiring PMs. And and yes. can you like what what type of mentoring do you do, and how does that all work? Okay, so basically, what we try to do is to match upcoming PMs or individuals that have an interest in project management with different established PMs in different sectors, ranging from engineering to software development, to manufacturing, to construction. Now, the kind of mentoring we do, it all depends on the level of expertise of the mentee. Usually, the mentors and the mentees at the start of the mentorship program, agree on the rules of engagement. Now, as the mentoring direction, what I do is to provide the framework or the guideline, the playing field for both mentors and mentees by providing some sort of accountability, some sort of roadmaps, deliverables, outcomes and expectations. Now, the reason for this is because we need to ensure that both the mentors and the mentees are getting value for their time. Now, during this over time, I realized that even mentors need to be mentored. And oftentimes, the mentee you're trying to mentor provides you a, I call it a green-eyed view. I say green-eyed because they're looking at this from a greenhorn perspective. They don't know nothing. Their curiosity is at the highest. What you what things you ordinarily thought were commonplace or is it easily achievable? They look at it from the eyes of a child, very curious. So what we try to do is to ensure that that curiosity is managed. That curiosity is now matched with practical experience. What we also do sometimes is to ensure the mentees actually live the life of the mentor. I call it a lived day experience. After a while, we get the mentees to go into the mentor's place of work and assume the role of a mentor, why the mentor assumes the role of a coach, all in a, day, all in a day's work. So typically you get the mentee replying to emails, facilitating meetings, holding conversations that the mentors are actually supposed to hold. It, it, it eases them in, into reality. Right. Um, yeah, so a oh, bunch of questions there. So what is the average, like, okay, so the the, ment, the mentees, what level of experience, like for, for anyone who'd say, hey, I'd like to become, a, a, I'd like to be part of this, I, I would like to be mentored by someone are these like really green people that have never managed or do they have a little bit of experience? Like what's, what do you think the average, I know it's probably all over the place, but no, what's no, the average? No, 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 really. No, what we're also trying to do is to try to redefine what mentorship is. I've been in the construction domain for over 10 years. Now I'm trying to transit into the IT project management domain. Even though I have a wealth of experience in the manufacturing and construction domain as a project and program manager, making the transition to IT project development is a little bit different. So even though I'm a mentor, I still have mentors in the IT field mentoring me to bring me up to speed 
on how to become the best version of an IT project manager that I can be. That being said, the level of expertise ranges from zero to 10, 15, 20. As another example, I have a mentor. She's a coach. She runs a well-established coaching program, but she signed up as a mentee on, on, the, on, on, on the program. Why? When I asked her, why are you signing up as a mentee? She said, Charles, I have almost never been to any country apart from the US and Canada. So I'm signing up as a mentee to get perspective of different people who live different places. He said, like you, for instance, you've lived in the UK, you've lived in Canada, you've lived in Germany, you've, you've lived in Nigeria. I need to learn how the culture, what is the culture of the average Nigerian when it relates to work? So it, it ranges from okay. zero and to 100. What, and just as an aside, you mm -hmm. mentioned you're moving from the construction project management domain to the IT domain you'd like to or in process yeah. um, I may need to have you back I'd love to talk a whole lot about that <laughs> but it, but it's a different it's a different maybe we'll maybe we'll come back to that but or I may want to have you back to talk that's fascinating to me too because yeah, sure. I can't think of two more uh, different domains, like, you know, the whole issue of, of project management in different domains is, is, is a really good one, but it, construction, it I can't, my, my off the right, right off the bat, the, the construction and IT seems like two pretty different worlds of management, but, but let's, let's come back to that. I might, I might, uh, you know, ask you again, because that, that topic fascinates me, but. but I, I, uh, I agree, Dave. Um, Although construction and IT are two broad different domains, that's where mentoring and coaching comes in. Yes. Recent, recently, PMI had launched a micro-credential program, which is called Agile Hybrid Pro, that tries to integ integrate predictive with iterative and incremental methods of planning. So when you really look at it, you will find that even though on the broader things, they are both two different peas in a pod. But when we zone into the core functions or the core expectations of both type of um, either project management in IT or construction, it is all value utilization. How do we deliver the best value to the client at the best cost in the least time at the best quality? Yep. So every, every, every other thing around it is just semantics, maybe reducing your planning timeline and the rest. Yep. Right? No, Again, sure. I, I agree. When I try to tie that to mentoring, I also try to look at, let's look at the agile or let's look at IT project management, which is more focused on the agile delivery method uh, using maybe the Scrum or Kanban frameworks. And let's look at construction or manufacturing, which is um, incremental and um, pre predictive. It is the same thing as mentoring. Now, when a mentor starts or a mentee starts, you've got some certain fixed expectations. Oh, I want to be mentored by Dave. I want to be exactly like Dave. That is predictive. Now, over time, you realize that, all right, Dave is an excellent mentor, but there are some aspects of Dave's mentoring or Dave's career that I want to either scale down on or scale up on. Why? It is impossible for two individuals to be exactly the same. The same thing we teach in project management. It is impossible for two projects to be exactly the same, have the same timeline, have the same cost, have the same risk. That would be same thing when I, 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 tell, I tell people when I mentor. You go fast when you go alone, but you go farther when you go together. Right. That for me is the sum total of why mentoring is very important in today's world. 
All right, that's a, that I like that saying. I'll have to, I'll, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll have to use and credit you on on that. Um, so how does how does one get into uh, again? Somebody says, yeah, this this sounds like a good deal as a from the point of view of a of a men, a mentee. Sounds good. Now, how do I do it? Do I, I assume you would need to join a PMI and join a local chapter? Is this through through chapters, or how do you how do you get into this deal? That is not a prerequisite. I've got lots of mentees from Pakistan, from India, from Nigeria, and they do not have PMI membership. They are not PMP certified. They are not CAPM certified. How do, how do I reach out to them? In the city I live in, there is a college. I know I have partnerships with some college where I go to the project management department and speak to them and say, hey, look, you've got project managers that will be hitting the market very soon. Apart from giving them the theoretical expertise, it is important for them to have a feel, a practical feel of the day-to-day -day life of a project manager. Also, another observation is most people do not exactly know the career trajectory they wanna go. By seeking a mentor, it helps you kind of define what do you wanna do? So how do we reach out to them? Through LinkedIn. Usually when I make posts, um, send out posts on LinkedIn, I have, I have people reach out to me. Hi, how do I become a part of this? Either as a mentor as, or as a mentee. So I am constantly recruiting for mentors and mentees. Constant, it's, it's, it's like a marketing drive. Right, right. right. So it's constant right. recruitment. Right. Um, so. Okay, a couple of things is is uh, if, if you as a, if you are a mentor, um, you know I've often you know I think of I, there's an expression that I came across many years ago that I've liked this analogy is that there are certain things big topics is there's a there's an analogy of it it is like drinking from a fire hose you know the the the, the image of getting you know that just it's too much to take in um, and I view learning about project management almost as that if you say okay it always it's always funny when somebody says you know hey could you give me an introduction to project management in three hours and i go oh okay um we can't cover it in three you know it's it's we can we can just scratch the surface we can provide a few definitions and a little bit of context but we so i guess when when you're a mentor how do you, where do you start with, with mentees? And let's say they're, they're green. Like, let's say they're, they're pretty new. They're not, they're, they're not experienced. Where do you start? Like, what, what, what do you, where do you start with them? What are your biggest priorities with you? If you were mentoring and bringing along this, you know, person who's saying, you know, look, Charles, I, I want to learn from you. Where do you start with them? The first, the first technique we use or the team and I use is the SMART principle where we sit with the mentee and say, hey, look, there are no hard and fast rules to this. Think of this, what do you want to do in the next six months? What do you see, your, where do you see yourself being in the next five years? Who are your role models career-wise? Who do you wanna model your career against? That's a very important question because by knowing who they want to model their career against, we are now able to set smart principles. Okay, you want to model your career um, against Dave's career. Dave has had a long, illustrious career. How do you model your career against Dave's career? So what we do is I set smart principles, I set smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. Now by setting smart goals in small chunks, we're able to help the mentees see the value of being specific in their desires, in their aspirations, in what they want. And oftentimes, it's always very difficult because you wanna, you're, you're pulled in different directions. There is the UI, UX, there is the product manager, there is the scrum master. There are lots of buzzwords going around and this causes a lot of confusion for prospective project managers. So the first thing is how do you want to be seen? What image do you want to portray or what image do you want people to see? 
is this image in line with your, your role model? Because you cannot overemphasize the importance of having role models. Why? These are people that have done something you aspire to do. These are people that have walked the road you intend to walk. There is no need reinventing the wheel, right? If, if, the, if a road has been walked, tried, tested, and trusted, then you may want to also walk that road with some little pivots every now and then, because of course, as human beings, as we keep growing, our expectations keep changing slightly. Now, the first step again, Dave, is helping them realize the value of setting smart goals, helping them realize the value of having a picture in their mind's eye of a role model, someone they aspire to be like, maybe not in totality, but someone whose career they want to model. Another way we look at it is, what organization do you wanna be working for in the next five years? Again, the, the, the type of organization they wanna work in also lets us know what their mindset is. I've had mentees who never ever wanna work for big organizations. They would always tell you if, it's, if the organization is between 10, 20, 50, I'm fine. If the staff strength is above 100, nah because I'll get lost in the crowd. So all these are gives us, gives us indications, fillers of the kind of approach to use, whether we're gonna adopt the directive approach, the coaching approach, the supportive approach, or the delegating approach. But all this comes after we've established what their smart priorities, what their smart goals are. Right. Um, and what would you, what would you, your advice be to, you know, um, when we think of PMI, we think of certifications and, and say somebody is, somebody is new to PM, they've just say maybe graduated from, a, from an introductory PM program or something like that. What's your advice about CAPM, Certified Associated Project Management? Do you, is that something you think that is absolutely go out and get it? And, and, and there, uh, there, there, for, there are no absolutes, yeah. right? So it's something that is needed why it assesses your level of theoretical expertise. That's the important. So when someone sees Charles, CAPM behind my name, they understand that, all right, Charles has been tested and found worthy on the principles regarding project management for this level. He knows how to, he knows um, the project life cycle. He knows the principles of project management. He's been tested. It then remains for someone to give you the opportunity to marry theory with practice. So it proves your expertise. I, I, can't, I can't stress in enough the importance of certification. Why? It, it helps you assess yourself. It helps you, it helps you announce yourself to the world that I have a certain level of expertise around this, this topic. So it's, it's very, very needful. Is it necessary? No. Right, right. So all things being equal, it's, it's, it's a good idea. What do you think is the best, like when you're, when you're mentoring, you know, again, a, a up young or a, a new uh, aspiring project manager, they, okay, let's get a CAPM. What's what do you think is the is the the way for them to be most likely successful? Like, do you say to you know join a chapter, find a prep course, uh, you know do it yourself? Like, what what are the different strategies, and what do you recommend for for getting it? Okay. Funny enough, I'm going to refer to the course outline for um, our course. Yeah. What the question I start with is what kind of power do you want to exhibit? What kind of influence do you want to wield? And that always gets them, okay, what are you talking about? I'm like, look, there are different kinds of power. Now, the, the kind of power and influence you want to exhibit five, 10 years from now, determines the kind of path you will go. So my advice for them is, I, I use myself as an example. I'm like, I always strive for information power, right? This is power that comes from knowledge. 
people always defer to you because you know. And what does that make you? It makes you a lifelong learner. Learning is a continuum. You're always looking at learning new things, always looking at being um, up to date with current industry standards. So my advice to them, and it's always very motivational, I always start with the picture of power. Think of Obama. Who is your favorite? Who is your favorite person in the world? And they always go, maybe um, um, Dave Barrett or Charles. I'm like, okay. What kind of power do you think Dave Barrett has? And they always go, um, I don't understand what you're saying, Charles. And then I create a picture of the five kinds of power. And they're like, what kind of power do you want to ascribe to? And I always get, oh, I like knowledge. It shows I'm going to always be, be needed. I'm like, yep. That means you need to be aligned with placing yourself in a position to receive this kind of power. And that kind of power comes by knowledge, constantly updating yourself, getting certifications, pivoting when it's needed. It's usually too much for them at, 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 at the start. But when you bring it home, when, when you mirror it using their role model, when you mirror it using their parents, and this is always information they give to you that you use back to say, all right, you want to be like your dad. Why do you want to be like your dad? Oh, my dad is so strong. He's, he knows everything. He's a provider. And I go, why do you think your dad is a provider? Um, he gets really, he gets well paid at work, okay? Why do you think your dad gets paid at work, gets well paid at work? Because he, he, he knows what he's doing. He's an authority, okay? Why do you think your dad is an authority? I guess because he studies a lot. Why do you think your dad studies a lot? Uh, to become an authority, you see? It's, it's a secular loop, right? So what, what I keep asking the why question until I get to the point where we get to is a loop, where knowledge is important for something or some cause and effect. Yeah, no, I, 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 I love the fact that you are referring to power you know, in, in this context, this is, this is I, I, I really like that concept. And, and just to circle back, you mentioned the course outline or the our course. We, we both teach the same course right right now. Right, yeah. And uh, interestingly enough, right before we got together for this this meeting, I was uh, teaching a, a, a lesson to my students online on power and influence like ironically <laughs> i was just talking about power and influence with 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 my students and uh um you know which is another section of the same course as, as you're teaching right now and uh you know it is power and influence is one of the most power not to overuse the word power but one of the most powerful concepts yes. of you know, oh, yes. a, certainly a project management of projects, but a, but a whole lot else. And the linking of the, you know, the power, you know, um, uh, expert power, really knowledge, you know, expertise mm -hmm. power, which comes from knowledge and studying and so on. And linking that to certification is, is beautiful. I love that. I love that concept. You yeah, know, but, I hadn't but, thought of it that way. Yeah, but, but it, it is what certification does it, it, it exhibits your expert power, your power yes. of expertise. That's what it does. The more certification you get, the more you build that level of power. When people, of course, these days when you see um, job vacancies, they are specific. PMP certification and assets, SAP certification and assets, Agile certification and assets. This is because they want to be certain that you already have a demonstrated history of a certain kind of power. That after you get the expert power, of course, then you cannot also strive for the legitimate power, which for me is an offshoot of the expert power. Right. Because when you start from being an expert, it's only natural, it's a natural progression. You gain legitimate power. So right. expert power will definitely come with legitimate power sometime in the future. Yes. But legitimate power may not be directly associated with expert power. I call, I call expert power the foundation of all kinds of power and influence. Yes. Get, get it if you want to be, yeah. if, if you want to have your voice heard. 
get this is awesome this is that i this is uh you know i i i you know again this is the, you've tapped into something that it has been i i find that the discussion on power and influence it it doesn't you know it, it's a kind of thing where i strive to describe to new you know people students new younger you know generally younger people uh -huh. of just how important it is and, and i'm not sure i'm always successful in 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 portraying just how foundational it is but i do like your your your, your questioning asking them to keep asking and asking and coming to that the uh -huh. full circle that you were referring to, I find that to be very powerful. So that's a that's a really good approach. I like that, Charles. Again, I, I always try to ask them, do you remember when you were a kid? Oh, yes, I do. Do you remember um, taking others or direction from your parents? Oh, well, yes. Did you always like it? No, I no. And I go, why? Well, because my parents always think they are right, but they're not always right. And I go, so why do you obey your parents? And I, because they are my parents. I'm like, there you go. That's legitimate power. Yes. Now, that is important, but as a child, you frowned on it. So be very careful that as a leader, your subordinates or those you're leading or managing or coaching, at some point, we frown at legitimate power. And then I go, how about in school? Who is your favorite teacher or your favorite prop? Oh, Dave Barrett. Okay. Why did you pick Dave Barrett and not maybe Charles? Oh, come on, Charles. The way Dave explains things is so granular. I'm like, yeah, you see. So even if I have some kind of expert power, Dave Barrett has more expert power than me. This comes from experience. So naturally, you will want to gravitate towards Dave Barrett rather than me. And the question I go is, why? Oh, Charles, you're a lecturer here. You're, you're a part-time prof. Dave is a full-time prof. Dave has been in this business for a longer time than you. And therefore, we think he has. And I go, yes, you are correct. Now, because Dave has been constantly reinventing himself, if Dave has been in this business for 20 years and has not written any book or has not reinvented himself, when he speaks, and a newer project manager or a newer prof that reinvents himself speaks, they're gonna say, uh -uh, I think I'm gonna go with this person. So it's not enough to have expert power. You have to keep updating it. That's the, that's the, that's the downside of expert power. And for me, the upside of it is right. a continuum. Right, it's no, a continuum. I agree with that. And, and, I, and I, thanks Charles for, for putting me on the, on the positive side of that example. <laughs> We, we might have to query a few students to see if that's the, I think there might be a number that would choose, but anyways, that's, <laughs> it's, it, it's a hypothetical example. Um, so, okay. So what about, so what, what about PMP? Like, you know, I mean, when do you see, and I, and I know it's another certification, all the same things we said about power and so on would be true, but when do you see a student, uh, you know, an, an aspiring, when, when would you advise them to achieve their PMP. Now, now there is the minimum requirements you need. You need so many hours of this and so many yep. hours of that and so on. So there are the minimum requirements that you, that you should you know, ethically respect as, yep. a, as, yep. as an applicant. But when do you see the right time for a PMP, for a, for a, a, a PMP? Three, 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 three years plus experience. Yeah. Once, you, once you have a minimum of three years practical experience, you can attempt the PMP. Now, the right. reason is the PMP has a lot. It's the test book, the um, PM book of knowledge, PM book, rather. It gives you the theoretical overview. Right. But the exam is purely situational. It takes real life experiences, real life and project experiences, and puts it to you in form of a question. So even if you have all the practical, all the theoretical um, training experiences, it is going to be difficult without the practical experience. It's, that's why lived experiences is very important. If you do not have these lived experiences, the PMP becomes difficult for you to pass. That's why it's typically three years of practical experience minimum that qualifies you 
for the PMP or a certain number of contact hours. There has to be some practical experience involved. Otherwise, it's still an exercise, a, a mental exercise without practical underpins. Yeah, no, I, and I agree with that. I, I, I guess my, my advice to anyone listening is, is be careful not to rush it. You know, because you, it's it's three years of practical experience, and it's really three years. In, in my mind, it's not three years of being associated with a project, or you know, kind of being present in the room when things are talked. It's like no, you are in a project management role, and there's a difference. You're living it, yes, you're living, you're living it. it. You you are in that role where you need to make decisions on schedule and decisions on scope oh. and so on. Not you're not a team member. You're nope. not an assistant. You nope. are it. You know, nope. you're three nope. years. Then, and, and so my, my advice would be not to rush it, you know, not just because, you know, from a passing failure, we certainly don't want to fail. You know, you don't want to fail a PMP. It's costly <laughs> to, to do oh, that. But, oh, but it's also they, just getting more I, out of it. I've got friends, colleagues who have failed the PMP multiple occasions. Yeah. It's because, of course, they've got some practical experience, but not in the driving seat. It's right. either they were procurement specialists on the project, it's either they were um, um, team members or team lead. The bulk of the decision doesn't stop with them. And as long as the bulk of the decision does not stop with you, it becomes difficult to actually put on the cape of a PM and yeah. take those decisions that would um, either make or mar the project. So the PMP is not a certification to be rushed. It's a certification you ease yourself into. Yeah, and I and I I cannot agree more with that. And because I I um yeah, so two things. One is I've seen people who are gonna get their going to get their PMP, and I kind of and I'm and I'm not from a crit. I'm not saying this from a critical standpoint, but I kind of look at their sort of resume and I go, really? Like you you haven't like you said. I like that you haven't worn the cape. You know, is and that there is a difference between being, you know, again, in the room, being present and being accountable, you know, and until you've had that accountability of being the, you know, you, you're accountable for that project, which is what a project manager, you know, ultimately is. If until you have that, you're not really gonna going to be able to appreciate it and and you know but again, Dave, that's one of the values of mentorship. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Even if you've not lived the experience, you can live the experience through the eyes of your mentor. You yes. can, I have mentees that I take into the office on some days. I take permission from my supervisor. I'm like, look, I have some mentees undergoing practical training. Can I run a practical exercise with this? And I, I speak to my clients that, hey, you, you all know what I'm about. My, I feel like my mission is to, is to light as much candles as I can because a candle loses nothing when it lights when it lights another, right? So right. I take them to the office. I try to have them watch me at work. Then if time and chance permits, I allow them to take the lead on not too critical projects, but all right, how would you assess this situation? How would you diffuse this situation? The call is on you. And as I'm talking, I'm writing, Charles, what are you doing? No, oh, this is on you. So whatever suggestions you're making, this is what I'm typing out to the client. And it forces them to reevaluate and say, all right, so I'm actually wearing the cape of a PM for a day. And it's, I find it's very, very exciting for them. Oh, I know. It, it, and that, that, that is, seems invaluable, you know, experience. That, that, is, that is huge. Um, so yeah, no, that, and there is that. And, and just a, it sort of a, makes me think of, I, I remember years ago, um, interviewing for, as a program manager, interviewing for project managers. And it was really hard to, people who wanted to be a project manager on this program, and it was hard to get to the point of, of if their past experience, if they were really managing or if they were part of the project. It, it's a very, it's very semantic. And, and so you kind of go like, okay, you were, you were involved in that project. What was your involvement, you know? I, I, I call them the accidental project managers. Yeah, but, but <laughs> if you can say, the buck, did the buck stop with you or did you move that, you know, the buck from here to here and it was really over here. That, mm -hmm. That's, 
that was the, the thing that was hardest to get to. So, um, okay, say I was a, okay, say, say I was somebody that was, okay, I had my CAPM originally, maybe I bought my PMP, and then PMI offers a number of other certifications. If, if I was going to, is there, what, what do you think if, if there'd be one more to get, what would you, what, what would you, what would you recommend? One more, I would go for the disciplined Agile Scrum Master. Right, so, so get the Agile side. Thrown yeah, in. Get, get the Agile side. The reason is, um, if you've noticed, the PM Book 7 has totally shifted narrative from putting emphasis on the um, five stages of initiating, planning, executing. Now we are more about principles. And those principles are mainly centered around um, stewardship, servant leadership, being proactive to change, accommodating and embracing change. So I would, I would advise to go for either the Agile um, um, certification or the Disciplined Agile certification, because it, it gives you, it is a marriage between the predictive and the iterative and incremental type of planning or project delivery methods. No, that sounds that sounds good. And uh, um, any other advice? Just as we we kind of start to wrap up, is there any other advice to somebody who's listening that's sort of saying, "Yeah, I kind of want to get my certified. I want to get certified, but I don't know where to start." Like, I, you know, I'm I'm kind of I kind of I have this goal. I want to be I I want to be that project manager in this sort of discipline. I want those certifications. Where where do I go? Like what, what would you say to, the, to that person? Lots, 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 lots of free resources. LinkedIn Learning is an excellent resource. On YouTube, there are lots of free um, PMP question and answer videos. And usually for my team, I also have what I call um, a bootcamp for PMP or CAPM, where I hold long short sprint sessions showing them videos, typical questions, how the questions will be answered or what the expectations are. So for anyone looking to get certified, there are lots of trainers out there. They are very expensive, some of them, but trust and believe that there are free resources that you can use on LinkedIn that would, on LinkedIn and on YouTube, that would easily ace the exams without spending a dime. That is if you're a self-starter. For most people, they require some push, they require some study group. If that is you, then you may want to look for a, an accredited um, PMP or PMI trainer. And these people um, have training sessions for prospective um, certification takers. But if you want to start, I suggest you start small. You determine your learning style, go on YouTube, download these videos or watch these videos, read the PM book and Whatever questions you have, there are also lots of free groups on Facebook. There are free groups on different kinds of apps like Meetup, like Clubhouse. All these are apps where you have free personnel willing to give off their time, their knowledge, their expertise, all for free. So don't be fooled with the paid training, access, um, training providers. They are excellent, but if you can't afford it, there are tons of free resources that can help you ace this at your first try. Right, great advice. And uh, and I think you you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, your learning style, you know, like by all means, if you're, you know, if, if, if with the free resources, you have to remember, you gotta go, you gotta go watch them. You have yep. to, you know, maybe make a little note, you know, notes here and kind of mm -hmm. retest yourself over and over, but it's mm -hmm. great advice. If that's not you, if you want the, you know, kind of the guided tour where you will be tested and, you know, have somebody manage your learning, mm -hmm. then yeah, the, the uh, authorized trainers and so on are out there, but exactly. they don't do it exactly. for free, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, they're exactly. not, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. So, nope. so there's going to, there's going to be a price tag on, but, it, but it's choice, right? It's, it's all about, it's all and, about choice. And, and, and it's worth it. You, you can't put a price on knowledge. Right. You can't right. put a price on expert power. You can't. Right. Yeah, you can't. the thing I would, I would, I would say is okay. Based on who you are, which approach will get you there? 
you know, exactly. and certainly, I mean, I'd say I'd rather, I'd rather get there. I'd rather not pay anything if I don't have to, but if, if that's the only way to get there, then I guess you have to pay. Sure. sure. <laughs> so, so that's good. So it all, it all anyway. depends on your learning style. You, you have yeah. to be, you, you have to, first of all, be true to yourself and understand that Dave's clock cannot tell my time. So if Dave is a self-learner, a self-starter, I may not be a self-learner or a self-starter. I need to be pushed. So your learning style determines the kind of training programs you would go for. Right, exactly. So, uh, but anyways, no, Charles, it's been a fascinating discussion. There's actually at least two other things I'd like to talk to you uh, uh, more about. I'd like to explore more power and interests, uh, power and influence, sorry, sometime. And uh, certainly the, the journey from construction to IT project management is, is it's from construction is to manufacturing, and now I'm trying to move to IT. Right. Yes. The the transition that to me seems utterly fascinating because you know again without getting into it, um, but to go from construction is the most in my mind the most physical type of pro like there are the materials are actual like cement and, yep. and bulldozers and cranes and then in it it's all virtual you know it's it's all like there's computers <laughs> and then there's code you know so anyways that would be a that would be a whole I, I, different topic i call it but, a transition from the tangible to the intangible <laughs> absolutely and just what that the, the, the what that means is, is 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 there's a lot there so but anyways i thank you for for the the, the information on mentoring and on certification et cetera et cetera it's been a been a great discussion thank you very much thank you Dave, for having me it's been it's been a wonderful experience thanks for listening to my discussion with charles igwe i think it was evident throughout my discussion with charles how passionate he is about increasing your expertise power in general but specifically through achieving certifications as we discussed the achievement of knowledge should always be combined with its practical application. If you like this series of discussions, please consider following Understanding Projects on your favorite podcast player or clicking subscribe on YouTube.